Welcome to Chess Explained by Master number 13. Today I'm going to play a Blitz game on Lee Chess. I'm going to walk you through my thoughts. Let's go. I'm going to look for a game. Our rating is currently at 24-16. I lost a couple of games before. Um, it happens. But yeah. We should get a very good quality game because we're 2400. And um, usually I get an FM or a... Sometimes I get an IM. Um, but yeah, it's from 23 or 2200. I think you start getting like national masters and kind of masters. Okay, we're playing as Louise Mike Mi Michel 2400. Pretty good. Opens up with d4. We're playing with the black pieces. We're going to play. Um, I forgot to say good luck. Good luck. We're going to play pawn to d5. c4. In this position, you can play many things. You can reject or you can decline the queen's gambit. Um, you can accept the queen's gambit. You can play something like e5, which is gambity against... You, you play a, ga a counter gambit against the queen's gambit. And I don't know how many times I've said gambit so far. I'm going to play pawn to e6, which is a little bit classic. Um, it's, it's, it's the usual way of playing. I'm going to play knight f6. Bishop g5. This is very modern nowadays. And now I'm going to play c6, which is the Slav, because I have this little triangle center. And many times in the Slav, you're going to play, play d takes e4, e4, and b5. Which is pretty um pretty sharp and you know you have to know what you're doing as black and as white but as everything else once at some point players are going to start uh, forgetting their theory and you have you're you're going to be left alone with what um what um what what your brain well, with, with logic and uh it all comes down to you at the end. So that's why I don't recommend working on theory at the beginning of your chess journey. I think you should work mainly in uh, exercising tactics and, and, and puzzles. Bishop takes g5. So what happened normal, What happened right now, sorry, that I failed to explain because I was talking about something else, is that every time you, your, your knight is pinned and they attack it with a pawn, there's this common pattern of playing h6, bishop h4, g5, which actually happened in the last chess explained by master. So uh, chess explained by master number 12. And uh, my opponent sacrificed the knight momentarily because they know that they're going to take the, the, the knight back anyway. And now I have a couple of... So I can play bishop e7 and knight bd7. Both of them are very different uh, if, as far as I, I remember. Um, bishop e7 forces this to, to get off. I'm not sure if there's... So knight bd7, might, maybe the problem is going to be that the c6 pawn is going to be weak. So I'm going to play bishop e7. This seems a little bit more natural. And it's 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 pretty much telling White, hey, I'm already ready. I'm ready to move my knight to d5. If you don't take my knight right now, you're gonna be down, knight. So this forces matters matters. Sorry, and you're gonna notice that Black's or my position is a little bit lazy, passive. Uh, sorry, I say lazy because I teach on schools. Passive. Um, so you have active active pieces like this or passive pieces like that. So I have to do something about that. But Bishop e3 feels already too slow. It's weird. It would be hard to believe that this is theory. So I have a couple of um, ideas. So I can play e5 to get my bishop out. Um, what else? I can play knight d7, knight b6. What is the main main priority in this position? e5, d5. Is that a problem? Doesn't seem like a problem. I can play bishop f5, but who knows? Bishop b7, knight e4, bishop e7. Is that a problem? Shouldn't be. I'm going to castle queenside if, if I haven't said that yet. So I'm going to play bishop b7. If g3, of course, c5 is there. If bishop e2, rook g8, and I get c5 sometimes, maybe. It's probably not working right now because I need my pieces to be a little bit more active. But um, I have to watch out about, as well about this. But this bishop is in the future going to do something about about that so it's in the future going to be very strong so hopefully that's going to work okay bishop e2 i was going to say i would have to watch out about stuff like queen f3 and knight takes b5 because then this is this is this is losing but i don't think that was good for 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 white the bishop e2 was played rook g8 castles i don't think i have much so i'm going to just develop my my knight as normal like normal bishop f3 makes sense kind of counter counter attacking this diagonal or or, or occupying the diagonal before I can. And once again, this is this is probably a little bit of a threat. Um, okay, I'm going to play queen c7. I have two reasons. One is that I, I get ready for castling. Two is that I de defend the, the bishop on b7. 
And three, hoping for my opponent to fall in. Nah, I'm joking. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but who knows? It, it does prevent white from castling, even though it, it's just one move, and probably my opponent might want to castle queenside. Although, now that I think about it, castling queenside for white is also pretty, pretty risky. Okay, my opponent plays a4. Now, I can play b4, or I can play a6, which keeps things controlled. I don't want c4 to be weak, so I'm going to play a6. Against a takes b5, I can take c takes b5, and everything's fine. Remember that my rook is defended. Um, so everything should be fine. And there's also some lines where, for instance, a takes b, c takes b5. Um, let's say my opponent goes crazy with knight takes b5, a takes b5, rook takes a8, bishop takes a8, bishop takes a8. I have queen a5 at the end. Check. And I pick this, this, this bishop up. Okay, g3 played my opponent. I'm assuming that my opponent does want to castle um, short side after all. But now... But now what should I do? I have two plans. I can play something like bishop e7 and bishop d6, which is what I think I'm going to play. And I think I'll have to castle queenside. Which is scary. Because he, my opponent have, has a4 played. And my my uh, counterplay is, is arriving very slow. So now I have to be careful. Now, I'm going to make sure that this doesn't get any more, any more crazy. Any crazier, sorry. So I'm going to put my king on b8. I'm not scared about this because I have bishop d6. If my opponent were to play knight e4, then I have to worry about that. Um, maybe not. Maybe I have e5 as well. And um, if b3, then I have b4, knight e4, c3, which is very important to close things up before I get absolutely obliterated. Um, because my opponent is definitely quicker in, in the in the king side uh, or in the queen side attack. It's it's complicated it were to attack my king, pretty much. We have opposite color uh, castling. And in this kind of positions, whoever gets to the other king first wins. It's a very dynamic game, usually. I'm going to play knight b6. I'm going to get my knight to d5. Once again, bishop f4 I'm not worried about because bishop d6 is there. After knight e4, knight d5 happens. Um, funnily enough, I don't think my opponent is getting anywhere with this uh, attack. I think if I, if I manage to put my pieces around my king, then it's not such a big deal momentarily but of course um things change okay i'm gonna play b4 as, as announced play c3 and that's a blunder because of bishop f4 or maybe i have e5 i think i have to play e5 it might not work but i sacrifice the queen and then i get give up the exchange and uh that should be that should be decent i did blunder this because i I am running out of time, but my opponent is also running out of time, so it's getting a little bit exciting. I'm going to play knight d5. When, you get, when, when you're in this kind of stage of the game where all, everyone's running out of time, activity is essential. It's absolutely essential. So, queen e5 already has to be played, I think, to which I'm going to trade, 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 and something, maybe rook d3. But my opponent goes for that, which I thought was a little bit dubious, because I, I get to put my rooks like this, and they look scary. And if something looks scary in time trouble, then yeah, you should not underestimate it. I'm going to keep attacking my, my opponent because that's fun. Bishop f5. My pieces are getting active. I'm going to play rook g8 again. Yeah, I think so. And at some point I might take on... I might take on e3. Why not? I can't play... Should we go for... Okay, there we go. My, our opponent decides to, to play ambitiously, which is good. Um, now, what do we do? Should we take? I think we should take... And play rook d8. Which might be a blunder. Actually, it's not. Because we have bishop d8. Oh, yeah, it is a blunder. Okay. Now, I'm going to teach you what to do when you blunder. Amazing, right? Amazing. Instructive. Uh, yeah, bishop c5. Okay, I'm going to teach you what to do with two blunders. King b6. Okay, it's getting a little bit goofy. But in all seriousness, this is still... I wouldn't call this absolutely easy. Um, If you relax, then suddenly the, the king... The pawn, sorry. The pawn runs. Like that. And like this. And all of a sudden, I might I might win. Just like that. See? It all was all part of the plan. Wow. Okay, crazy game. David, you didn't deserve to win that. That was absolutely rubbish. Well, I guess it was instructive from the point of view that even though the the, the game is not over until it's over. Uh in, in football, if you're if you're winning uh, 7-0, you can afford to make some mistakes. But in chess, if you make one mistake, that's that's it. You can't 
you can't you can't recover. So rook d8, of course, one of the worst moves I've ever played in my life. Okay, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, I'm but uh, definitely a very bad move. I'm disgusted. Don't think that I'm taking this too casually. I do I do suffer when I make these kind of moves. But I'm playing a game. The game is still over, on, on. So why would I why would I relax, right? So rook takes f5. I have to keep playing, keep making things as complicated as possible. Knight c5 was blundered as well, but to my or to my luck or you can say that this is not coincidence because my my king my opponent's king sorry is weakened uh because of knight takes e3 which is one of my plans of course i didn't see this far but you can call this not coincidence but um um but um something that should have happened logically and uh, my opponent already has to make this kind of moves and david you're down a rook um what, what is going on well as i said and as i was explaining this this pawn is this pawn is a little bit scary so if you relax as white, white has three seconds, five seconds. You, it's very easy to blunder this away because you can you you can argue that this rook has to stay in the first rank. So that extra rook, it is an extra rook, but it has to stay passive. And after something like this, I guess my opponent tried going something like that, which is not very good. Um, and I, this already smelled a little bit suspicious. And after c2, rook f1 only move, rook takes e3. All of a sudden, I'm back in the game. Um, I think my opponent has to take take something like king h1. I promote, we get this opposite color bishop endgame, which probably is slightly better for white. Um, but my opponent went for rook d7 for some reason, and now, of course, this is this is winning. I think I think promoting would have been a little bit more classy, because after rook takes e1, rook e1 is double check and checkmate. But, um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and as always, have a nice day.